Today I'm introducing a new project I'm working on and this all started with this A600 board which I bought off of eBay for 100 euros I think it was and yeah I did not see in the pictures that it was actually pretty corroded and when I tried to change the caps on the board I actually pulled a trace I had to go in and do some botch wiring here it's just a ground plane so that wasn't too big of a deal but then it dawned on me that I don't have a case for this I don't have a keyboard and it seems like one of the CIA chips is broken because the disk drive doesn't work but a GoTech does so there's some problem with the with the 5 volts which starts the the motor of the disk drive and a GoTech doesn't have one so that's not a problem and yeah I thought what to do with this board because I'm an Amiga guy and I need a real floppy drive if I'm putting this into an, a real Amiga case and so I sat down with Tinkercad and started designing a shell for this and my first idea actually was or one of the ideas was to take one of these IKEA Lego boxes and put the board in here because well it fits and I could do that but then again where is the fun in that and so I tinkered around a bit in Tinkercad and I came up with a design which I will show you later um, and PCB way thank you by the way was actually kind enough to sponsor this video and print the case and it's not a small case it has to it has to house this board so yeah that was a pretty hefty cost for that but if you like the design I will make it open source and you can use it you can modify it and you can put your own Amiga 600 in there and my idea was to turn this A600 into a real gaming console so that's what these videos are about you're to see this week and next week and maybe the week after that depending on how far I get because I haven't yet done anything to this and I haven't put it in the case and didn't test it and all the stuff I don't even have the case yet I'm waiting for it I, and I hope it will be produced in the next few days and ship over f uh, using FedEx from China so we will see about that but to get the 600 into the case I have to do a few modifications to accommodate that and I will show you in detail so that you can do it yourself if you like I think the design came out pretty nice that's what I hear from other people who saw the design especially the guys in China who deal with stuff like that every day so yeah we will I will not spoil this now you will see it pixelated I think in the thumbnail and uh, you will see it at the end of this video assuming the, the case arrives in time yeah let's uh, stop babbling around and let's get into modifying this let's get into modifying this A600 board and I will tell you what I have to do to make it fit it's not much it's just some cosmetics and uh, yeah we will see how this goes so let's do this cue the music this video is kindly sponsored by PCBWay thank you PCBWay <laughs> Okay, let's talk modifications. Um, the first mod will be that I remove this power jack here and uh, solder on the minus 12, plus 12 and 5 volts from this Pico PSU. I will remove this connector here so that it will be nice and flat to go in the case and there will be a place for this in the case and uh, I will solder the wires on the underside of the PCB not sure yet if I remove the um, RF modulator because I don't really need it I will put a USB keyboard interface on here which cost me 35 euros shipped which is nice I will have these two joystick plugs removed and 
I will put in a four player adapter so that you have four joystick ports on the console. And for that I have these nine pin DIN connector cable things. And I will put two in the place of the connectors here and I will put two on the four player adapter PCB which was also provided by PCBWay in a previous episode. So thank you PCBWay again. I will put in a GoTech which I have already prepared right here with a little display which also will find a place in the console. And I will put in that hard disk or CF card hard disk adapter. And yeah, that will pretty much be it. Um, there will be a few buttons. I was looking into some kind of HDMI connection. I have this adapter here and there's a place in the console for an HDMI adapter. So if you want to put one in, be my guest. But I couldn't find one for a reasonable price. If they are available at all, seem to run for about 200 euros and that is just not feasible for this project. Um, consider the amount of money I already invested plus the case and stuff like that. So in the end you will go out if you use this GoTech uh, CF card adapter and the case and you will have a, an A600 gaming console. You can put in all kinds of memory expansions, turbo cards, whatever you like. It all fits in the case. Yeah, and uh, you can just put it in the living room because it looks nice. I hope you find that too. Yeah, and that is pretty much it. So let's get this out of the uh, metal casing, which we will use this metal casing because it will you will see it through the back of the console. I uh, went the lazy way and did not make specific port um, cutouts for this. It's just this whole thing is, is, a, is, a, is a cutout. And um, you can also use the case for Raspberry Pi or Mister or anything like this. So let me get this out of the case and let's desolder the power supply, uh, the power plug and the two joystick ports and um, maybe the RF modulate, modulator. And then I will come back and we will put stuff in. Okay, did remove the RF modulator and the power socket. There. Here and here, which was pretty uneventful. And now to test if it still works, I have to connect my Pico power supply right here on these four pins. This, 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 and this. And this is plus 12, minus 12, 5, and ground. So I will just wire this up and we will test it. So I did remove this connector from this Pico Power PSU. I just cut the pins here and then desoldered all the individual pins. And I wired up the minus 12, which is if you have the connector like this, with this plastic thingy on top. It's pin two is minus 12, pin three is ground. Then from the other side, the second pin is five volts. And on the underside, if you turn it around, where these caps are, you have the yellow cable, which is plus 12, which is on the second pin from here again. So these are all the power pins we need. I will put some heat shrink tubing on this so that they don't short in between here. And then we can solder these cables, which should have a bit of length, I would say about 30 centimeters, um, so that you can fit it in the case if you're using the case. If you just want a Pico power supply for your A600, well, that is how it works. And I will show you in a minute how this is connected to the A600. So there's one other thing. For the PSU to actually start, you have to connect pin four and pin five. Pin four is the PSU or power on pin, which is a green wire normally on a supply power supply. And next to this pin five is ground. So you just ground pin four. Uh, next to the ground pin, you connect it via the cable. And that should start the power supply as soon as you plug it in. So we will have to find a solution for actually keeping this off. So we'll have to mount some kind of switch on there.
So before I connect all this to the Amiga, I actually test it and I have a power supply here which gives 12 volts into the Pico PSU over the barrel jack right here. And I have my cables here, I have them uh, put down so that they don't connect because that would short the machine or the PSU. So let's, let's just measure. Um, this should be 12 volts and it is 11.93 which is good. Then we have um, the blue wire right here, which should be minus 12. Let's check. And it is minus 12.9, yeah, and some, okay. And we have the red wire, which should be five volts. And it is 4.96. Good, so that seems to work. And it is started, so every wire here is wired up correctly. Yeah, let's connect this to the Amiga and see if the Amiga still works without the modulator and the power connector thing. Okay, I have my board out here again. This is my little uh, sheet sheet, plus 12, minus 12, 5 ground, which is like this because this is the corner of the board. And we are talking about these four pins here which I will solder the wires to. So let's put on some fresh flux first. So we have plus 12, which is the yellow wire on the now right hand side here. By the way, this is my fume extractor, if you didn't know. Plus 12 goes right here. That's on. Next up we have the minus 12, which is the blue wire. Then we have the red wire, which is five volts. That's on two. And finally, the black wire, which is also a bit too long. So that is all connected up. Plus 12, minus 12, five and ground. You can see it here. Plus 12, minus 12, five volt ground. Let's clean this up and let's test if the Amiga still works. Okay, let's put some electrical tape there so that it doesn't short anything. And as a little strain relief. Okay, so that is our A500 powered by a Pico PSU. So the Amiga is put into the uh, top cover of this IKEA Lego box. Let's see what happens. 12 volts and the Amiga springs to life. There it is. Still good. Nice. Okay, let's tackle the keyboard next. And for that I have this Emi Key 600 adapter here. And that just plugs on, I think, one of the CIAs. I have to check, actually. And it gives you an internal USB adapter or connector and you can also connect cables to route the USB out. And I got this super cheapo, 15 euro I think or 12, white keyboard, which is nice. And it looks a lot like one of these um, Raspberry Pi keyboards, and I'm pretty sure it's the same keyboard. Feels pretty much the same. Works with just one battery, has this USB dongle here, and you can switch it on and off, which is nice. Yeah, and pretty much every keyboard you can buy right now is better than an A600 original keyboard, so you didn't lo don't lose anything here can use uh, the keyboard stickers that you can get from various um, sellers I will link in the description to put on the Amiga keys here and yeah off you go. And the good thing is you can put this away if you put your console in the living room you don't have to have a keyboard around all the time. But you need one for most of the Amiga games to start it with F1 or stuff like that so better to have one than not to have one. So this little plug here will go into our USB connector and that will plug onto, uh, it says here, 
U7, and that is that guy over here. Yeah, it is a CIA chip. So there's the one for the disk drive, and there's the one for the keyboard. Corner is up here, up on the right hand corner, and there's a little corner here. So we have to put this in like this. Push this onto here. Yeah, something in the way. I think you have to bend this a little to the side to make this work. Yeah, that seems to be on there. Okay, and just like that we should have a keyboard. We just ignore this one here. There is um, an external keyboard adapter for A2000, 3000, 4000 keyboards. Um, which I will also link, which plugs in here. I had the, one of these in my A1200 videos where I had the 1200 tower and it's from LBOX, I think. Yeah, I will link it in the description. So that goes could go in here, so we didn't need this one. But let's check if this works. I have to grab a battery and then we can see if it actually boots up and has keyboard. Let's try this again. So the battery was seemingly not correct in the uh, battery compartment. So, ah, that's better, I think. Now we're getting somewhere. Do we have all the keys? Caps lock, return, cursor. Yeah, we won't be having, won't be having the extended number pad here on the right side, which is okay. And we seem to be missing an Amiga key, which is a shame. Let's see, yeah. We're missing the right Amiga key. Not sure if we can map that. Because I have pressed all the keys now. And we are missing the right Amiga key and the hyphen and help. Hmm. Okay, at least we get kind of a keyboard. Which is not bad. And we do have this little adapter says reset here. And there are two pins and I'm I assume if I short these, they will do a reset. Hmm. That would solve my reset button problem. I have the button, but I don't have it connected yet. So maybe I should quickly come up with the, re with the reset connector here and just try. I will not go and just short it, or will I? Will I? No, we are professionals. We don't do stuff like that. Let me put some connectors on here and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I connected the reset switch here. Just two wires to a push button. Let's start this again. Let's see if we can reset the machine with this. Let's push the reset button and it does indeed do a reset. Nice. So I do have my list here of stuff that has to be done. And um, let me just quickly put some check marks on here. So we have a reset button, which is good. We have power supply, which is good. We have the keyboard. So that does leave us with a power button. I will not do HDMI for now because it's just too expensive for that kind of project. Um, not willing to invest 200 euros. If you have some cheaper alternatives, let me know in the comments, please. And I will do a follow-up video. Um, hard disk, not sure if we need a hard disk, actually. Um, I think we are good using the GoTech for now. And um, yeah. So the GoTech USB out is just this extension cable here, which will be mounted inside the case and put the USB thingy out. And that will go into the GoTech in front here and the stick will go in here. 
pull the stick, put it in here, put the cable in here. Let me do this like this, uh, like this, and we should be able to switch. Yeah, we are. Okay, so that seems to work. So external USB done. Um, as I said, I will for now omit the hard disk and the HDMI. So let's just say not now, maybe in a future video. LEDs is pretty straightforward. We have um, the ground on this right side of this connector and then we have the three LEDs. So this is just a matter of uh, wiring it up. We have the four player adapter, which is this little PCB here, which is from PCB way. And I have a lot of these and you just connect this side to the parallel port or parallel connector and this to two DB9 or nine pin um, joystick connectors like these here. Only difference is I will not use a connector to connect from the outside to the parallel port, but on the inside. So I will put this somewhere here. Well, oh, this is getting nice and toasty down here. Um, so that this doesn't stick out and it will be an internal solution. Joystick ports, same. I will have to desolder these ports still. And then I have a GoTech display, which I have already connected here. And the nicer display here. And this is just a matter of removing the old one, desoldering and uh, putting on four wires. So I will not make a big fuss about this. Um, GoTech LEDs are just here. So same thing, I just have to connect a wire here to move them into the case. And we have the GoTech rotary, which is a bit more involved in my case because this is not a standard GoTech drive. This is one of these super cheapo uh, ELS 34E uh, and you have to solder wires to this chip here and there's no header for the GoTech uh, rotary. Yeah, so that is that. So I think the most complex things to do now is to get the rotary working. So GoTech display is already on there. This is just four wires. I can show you which wires there are. So what do we have? We have four wires here and if you're using this one here, there are lots of instructions to wire up one of these cheap OLED displays. And you have four wires here in, in front where the original display was. And you have um, the, let me put it like this. The leftmost wire goes to the leftmost connector or pin on this display. If you have it like this, you see the, the backside facing you. Second pin goes to the second pin from the left. The third pin here on the PCB goes to the fourth pin and the fourth pin here on the PCB goes to the third pin on the display. So these are just two last wires are switched. That's all. Pretty straightforward. So that is the GoTech display. Okay, next I'm gonna work on this little four player adapter here. And if you look closely, you can see that on the side of these nine pin connectors, there's just three pins connected on this side and four pins connected on this side. The, this pin here and this pin here is not connected to anything. See it like this, the other side. Now I will just use these uh, three wires and these four wires connect them on these connectors and then I can just push these into this thing here and have some removable connectors. So um, and I will do this on both sides so that I have player three and player four. And then we have a four player connector connected at least on this side and then we have to connect this to the parallel port on the board. I think the most of the back side here, if you look closely uh, consists of just one connection here which is over all these I think these are all ground and then there's a connection and there's a connection this is two wires plus 
yeah, some wires on the other side. So we might end up with about 10 to 12 wires to connect all the stuff here. And then we have a four player adapter connected permanently to the A600 board, which will be nice. Um, on the switch power button, on the power button side of things, I did decide to go the push button route, uh, the permanent switch route, because there are actually buttons that look exactly the same like these, but are permanent switches. So I ordered these and that will get rid of all the relay stuff I was planning. Why do it complicated if you can do it easy? So we will have a real push button for power and that will just connect to the power supplies. Green cable here. So this connection here, this green connection will be replaced by two of these cables. Not exactly these, but like these. And I will connect a button there and then, yeah, that is taken care of. Nice. Okay, I'm done with the wiring for this baby here. You can see it has quite some wires. We have 10 wires on this side. You can see I only put wires where actual connections on the PCB are. So there are two free spots. And this is this strain here, which will connect to the, to the parallel port. And we have on the other side, just two connections, a white one, which is for whatever, and a black one, which is ground. And on the other side, we have the three wire connections on this side and the four wire connections on this side and the most left pin is always free. So this can now connect to either this one or two of these, one on either side, which gives us player three and player four and to the parallel port on the other side, which will be a mod on the PCB itself. Okay, I did manage to get a few things done. Um, I did remove the two joystick ports and put in these cables here, which then connect to one of these here. Just plug in here. Uh, stupid thing is that they are not, not wired in row right here. So you have to figure out what to put where. We'll check if I can get better connectors here, but for now that is it. I also rewired this little board here and put it through the holes where the original um, power supply was connected because those filters are here and I think by bypassing the filters, which I did uh, accidentally, I put the wires behind the filters, we had a lot of noise in the picture. I think if I connect it like this, the noise will be gone. Also, I will have put some electrical tape down here so that I can put this little power supply right here. I will just tape it on here with double-sided tape um, and have my connector right there where it goes in the case. And I will shorten these wires a little so that maybe this also reduces a bit of noise. So we will have that right here and I don't have that wobbling around here and I have a, uh, um, an Amiga 600 with an integrated power supply, which is great. So let me do that. Um, and I still have to connect the parallel port uh, thingy for the four player adapter and then uh, Yeah, and the LEDs Okay, I have connected the parallel port stuff Which is this one next to the audio connectors and I just went and put the same color cables yeah, As on my Play, uh, for player adapter and they are just in the same spot and I just um, soldered them to the top pins of the parallel port. There are only two cables whoops, on the bottom side which is the white and the gray one and I just went and put these on the bottom side and routed them to the top because when the metal shield is on here you won't even see them. The metal shield is over this and you can't reach the lower pins or it's much harder to reach the lower pins because they are inside the connector and you can't solder that. That went pretty well. So now it's just the LEDs and uh, yeah, then all the mods on the board are done. I also sticky taped on the power supply, which is now permanently attached here, which is great. Yeah, pretty happy. Uh, looks wild, but could work. Who knows? Okay, for the LEDs, I just have these standard LEDs put on a 220 ohm resistor on the 
um, cathode, which is the negative side, the shorter leg, which has a flat side of the LED. It's hard to see here in this. And then connected a wire, have three of these. The ground wire will go to one wire and then there will three th be three separate wires for the uh, plus side of the LED and that will connect to this little connector down here. So I will heat shrink this and then put on the plus side and then yeah, should be LED. Okay, I want to quickly show you how to connect the um, rotary encoder on my type of GoTek. And usually you have these jumpers where you just can connect the rotary di uh, dial. But in my case, I have to solder to this little chip here, this ARM STM32F105 or S. And um, yeah, that is a pretty small chip. Just to show you, I have the microscope attached. So let me show you that in a sec. So here you can see my soldering work and I did some strain relieving on these little cables here. And just to give you a size comparison, this is the head of a cotton bud. So these things here are freaking tiny and it took me, well, new wire because my wire was too thick for this and then about 30 minutes to get these two wires attached here without bridging the other pins because, well, you have to have a soldering iron which has such, uh, such a small pitch and the pointy tip for, of the soldering iron wouldn't get too hot enough to actually solder the wires. So yeah, I haven't tried this yet. So let's connect this up to the encoder and see if it actually works. Okay, so here's my rotary switch or rotary encoder and uh, I have a here are three pins on one side and there are two pins on the other. Two pins on the other is just the green wire and two black wires. One goes out, one goes to the other side, the middle pin on the other side, and we have a red and a black wire, so a uh, blue wire. So I'm going to connect these, but I have to check how to connect these. And I will connect some DuPont cables on these cables here so that I can just plug and unplug them. Let me quickly do this. Okay, I think we are good for a test. So I will not show you the screen of the of the machine because it's not interesting right now. We are looking at this rotary dial, if that works. So we get an image on the screen right here. Uh, something's happening. Doesn't do much which is not good. So I did connect this to the ground here. So this wire here seems to work, but these two wires which I soldered to the chip do not, oh, I see. I think one of my wires already got loose. Let me check for my solder work here. Yeah, that's loose already. Ah, oh, shit. <sighs> So without this cable, there will be no party. So I have to solder again, and this is really shitty soldering. Oh man, here we go again. Okay, I did re-solder this wire, and gah, minutes later, quite some time, some minutes later, I'm ready to test again. So let's see if that changed anything. Let's fire up the machine. And yes, it actually works. Let's see, select, and it's loading to a point. Let's see, yeah, that's actually really loading. Nice. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the whole modding stuff here and now I'm waiting for the for the case to arrive and I just saw that uh, PCBWay finished producing the case they are at 100% and they are packaging it right now and it's Friday and I hope to have the case by Monday or Tuesday so yeah maybe Tuesday 
So let's hope for the best and I'm looking forward to actually put this thing in a case and finish the project because yeah, I'm on this for I think eight, nine days now and it might not seem like much just to wire up some cables but you have to research, you have to check all the stuff and uh, yeah, I already found some shaky things in my case design which I might have to correct with some kind of Dremel or so. But uh, yeah, we will see. I'm pretty happy. So I will now show you a 3D render of the case. And as you can see, I designed the case in Tinkercad, which is an online tool where you can de 3D design stuff. And you can see I tried to grab all the Amiga uh, looks like the grills on the top. Also put some grills on the front. We have room for the four game ports or joystick ports. Oops. We have a power button, reset button and the um, rotary dial which will go here. We have the little display for the GoTech here, three LEDs. Not sure if I will get away with the Amiga font here. And on the back side, so this is, a, this is a closed case because if you want to put stuff in here you have to open it. Um, yeah. Uh, you have to open it here and you have a tray in here and if you take this tray out so you mount the PCB down here the original A600 PCB and then you have this here and this sits on this little um, drawer slides and onto this you mount you mount the PSU or that was the initial idea I have some cutouts here for the buttons and stuff and the GoTech and yeah, then you just slide both things in the PCB of the A600 and this tray with all the peripherals. Slide it in and close it down and you have your, your console. Yeah, I have four legs on the bottom and this is just one large piece, which is why it takes so long to print. Um, I will actually do, I think, a smaller, slightly smaller version most of these Ender 3D printers can do 28 centimeters, so I'm just four centimeters away from being able to print this case completely at home. And I will do a 28 centimeter case, but it won't fit the A600 because the A600 is yeah 32 centimeters wide and without cutting stuff, and you can't just cut stuff over PCB, you're out of luck here. So this will then be for a Mr. or a Raspberry Pi. Or you could put your um, Amiga 500 Mini in, in there, which would make a lot of sense because then you could actually use this without an actual keyboard because it has an on-screen keyboard. That's an option. And um, yeah, my, maybe I will do a, another video about that. So this is it for part one. This is how the um, the case looks, let me close this up again, and uh, yeah, in the next episode you will actually see the completed case. I hope you like the design, you can of course print this in whatever color you like, you can do some, I printed it in white, so I will get something like this, Snow White Amiga case, but in the style of the A1200, the new A1200 case. But you can also do it in black. Let's do it in black. This is black. It's very black. But it's doable. And you should of course do the backside too then. You can also do it in red. Let's do it in red. Just to see how it looks in red. Yeah, it looks uh, red. Looks red and red. Yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments about the case design and the project in itself. Um, and yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching this episode of Retro the New Black. We are doing an A600 gaming console and part two coming as soon as I have the case. So maybe next week or the next uh, the week after that. Stay safe and until next time. Bye bye. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you need any PCBs, pre-assembled PCBs or 3D printing, Please use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. 
If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.